Hello and welcome to the CATIA Generative Shape Design Tutorial. The Generative Shape Design Workbench is typically used when designing organic shapes, meaning a component with few straight lines or flat surfaces, such as a computer mouse or the hand grip of an electric drill. Today we will be constructing the base for the space ball that we use in the CATIA lab. Begin by entering the Generative Shape Design Workbench. Start shape generative shape design. The first command that we'll look at allows you to combine sketches to form a complex surface. We will combine these two sketches as you see on the screen into a complex surface for the top of the spaceball base. We'll use the combine command found right here on the right hand side of your screen. Normal combine type, you will select both of your curves, preview, if it looks like what you want, click OK. You now have the outline for your complex surface. We'll now hide these two sketches so all we see is our complex outline. Now that we have our complex outline, we'll fill it to create the top surface of the space ball. The first thing we need to do in order to create a fill surface is to add a point. Each fill surface requires what's called a passing point to help define its shape. In this, it automatically brought up the point with the coordinates that we need that will be used here. You can change these coordinates to suit your specific purpose. We'll click OK and now we have our point. Now we can go to the fill surface command, select your boundary which can be any closed contour and your passing point which is the point that we just created. Preview. As you can see we now have a complex surface. If it looks like what you want, click OK. Now, we'll create the sides of the spaceball base. We'll begin by unhiding a previously drawn sketch we have of the base outline. Now, to create the sides which will join the base outline to the complex surface that we just created, we'll use the multi-selection surface command found right here. Select your guide curves here and here and click preview. As you can see it's just created a multi-selection surface from our top plane or from our bottom plane to our top complex surface. If it looks like what you want click OK. To form the bottom of the space ball we'll use the fill surface command again using our base outline as the boundary and using the origin as our passing point. Click preview. We now have a closed surface. Click OK. The next thing we'll do is create the bump that is located right about here on your space ball. We'll begin by looking at two sketches that we'd previously drawn. As you can see, they're an ellipse and a point. Now, we'd like to project this ellipse onto the top surface of the space ball here, the first surface that we created. This we can do by entering the same menu as the combine command but instead we select projection. Le use a normal projection type for the projected element, select your oval, and for the support select the surface on which you'd like it to be projected. Click preview. If it looks like what you want, click OK. 
we now have the oval projected onto our complex surface. This can also be used for the point, the center point of that oval. This will be used later to create the bump in the center of the space ball. To assist us in creating the bump that will be located right here, we must create a sketch to define the direction that the bump will deform. We'll open a sketch on this plane and use the project 3D elements command that you've used before to project this point onto the sketch. We'll then create a line from this point to whatever direction you'd like the bump to deform. I'll pick this direction. If you're satisfied with that, exit the sketch. We now have a sketch that will help us form our bump. To access the bump command, go to Insert, Advanced Surfaces, Bump. Select your surface to deform, which will be our top surface here, the limit curve of the bump, which will be our projection here, the deformation center, which will be our point here, our deformation direction, which will be defined by the line that we just sketched out, and then our deformation distance. In this case, I will pick a quarter inch preview to see how your bump looks. The deformation distance doesn't look quite big enough to me, so we can change this to say three quarters of an inch. Preview again. In the parameters section you can pick different continuities such as point or tangent. In this case we'll pick a point, dis point continuity. As you can see, this leaves us with a sharp edge right here. You can also change your center curvature, which will change the shape of the bump. In this case, I'll leave it at 1. If you're satisfied with how it looks, click OK. After we've created our bump, we need to smooth out the sharp edge left by the point continuity in the bump command. We will do this utilizing an edge fillet, which can be found here. Click edge fillet. The extremities will be left smooth. Radius 2 inches. The object, to f you can modify the radius to anything you'd like, and then select your objects to fill it. In this case, we'll fill it the outline around our bump. You can see the radius is defined here and our bump outline is highlighted in red. Click Preview. If everything works, looks like you want it, click OK. We now have a smooth edge between our bump and the rest of our complex surface. As you can see, we've completed our space ball base. This concludes the Generative Shape Design lesson.